Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and have the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 2nd of September. PM Modi to embark on visit to Southeast countries, focus on Myanmar and countering China. Pakistan rejects Jay Shankar's remarks on Article 370, calls them delusional. And Afghan B-girl disqualified from Olympics for free Afghan women message says she would repeat it. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will embark on visit to Southeast Asian countries for three days on 3rd of September, the Foreign Ministry announced on Monday. In a historic visit, PM Modi will arrive in Brunei on Tuesday at the invitation of Sultan of Brunei. This will be the first ever bilateral visit by an Indian Prime Minister to the Southeast Asian country, which coincides with the 40th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries. Following this, he will travel to Singapore from September 4 to 5 at the invitation of his Singaporean counterpart, Lawrence Wong. According to the Foreign Ministry, situation of Myanmar is likely to come up in talks in both Singapore and Brunei. Maritime security will also figure among the discussions, a senior official said. The visit is also being seen as a response to counter China's growing influence in the region. And India on Sunday dismissed the claims on visa ban of Bangladeshi student protesters, calling such reports as fake news, reports have suggested. The development comes after a few Bangladeshi media outlets claimed the Indian government has blacklisted six protesters and their family members for inciting anti-India sentiments during the month-long protest that led to the removal of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, a close aide of New Delhi. However, sources in India's foreign ministry have said the ban as fake news. Meanwhile, the UN Human Rights Office this past weekend has said it will dispatch a fact-finding mission to Bangladesh as requested by Mohammad Yunus-led interim government to investigate alleged human rights violations during recent deadly violence in the country. This decision follows a visit by a UN team from August 22 to 29, during which they engaged with various stakeholders, including members of the interim government. Last month's anti-government protests, which began as a student-led movement against public sector job quotas, escalated into a deadliest violence since the country's independence in 1971. The unrest left more than 1,000 people dead and prompted PM Sheikh Hasina to resign and flee to India on August 5. Days after, India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar termed Article 370 done and dusted, Pakistan on Sunday rejected the minister's claim and called the remarks misleading. Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zehra Balot said that the Kashmir dispute is internationally recognized and must be solved in accordance with the UNSC resolutions and wishes of the people living in the region. She further said such claims are not only misleading but delusional. Both the countries are at odds after India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi changed the status of Jammu and Kashmir in 2019, a decision that Pakistan believed undermined the environment for holding talks between the neighbours. Despite frosty ties, the two countries agreed to renew the 2003 ceasefire agreement along the line of control in 2021. Moving on, Activists in the U.S. recently staged a protest highlighting Pakistani atrocities in Sindh and the case of abduction of Hindu minor girl Priya Kumari. A report. The Sindhi Foundation, a U.S.-based human rights organization, recently held a protest outside the Pakistani consulate in New York to raise their voice against rights abuses against Sindhis and the Baloch people and demand the withdrawal of Pakistani military and the ISI from Sindh and Balochistan. They also spotlighted the case of Priya Kumari, a Sindhi Hindu minor girl who was abducted in August 2021 and still remains missing. The activists claimed that her abduction is part of a broader state-sponsored agenda in Pakistan. We are gathered here 
for today for Priya Kumari and other important disappearances people. Pakistan every day creating the problem for the Balochistan, for the sin, and they are attacking on our people, they are taking our daughters, they are taking our sons, they are taking our lands. The Sindhi Foundation has been running a global campaign for Priya Kumari's safe return and highlighting human rights abuses against Sindhis. The activists announced they will hold a grand exhibition in November in Washington. Moving on, Maniza Talash, Afghan breakdancer who was disqualified at the Paris Olympics last month for displaying words free Afghan women on her cape this past weekend, said that she planned it for four months and would do it again. Talash, who lives in Spain, wore a light blue cape with a phrase written on it in large white letters in her pre-qualifier loss to India, Sajjo of Netherlands, which she said was inspired by the Hunger Games movie. Political slogans and statements are banned on the field of play and on podiums at the Olympics. Talash said the cape she wore at Olympics was symbolic, like wings for Afghan women to take flight and break free. زیادترین نفرها فکر میکنن که مثلا تصمیم که گرفتم بر من خیلی سخت بوده مثلا باید رویاه های من کنار بگذارم تا یک حرف درباره دخترای افغانستان بزنم ولی از نظر من خیلی هم ساده بود چیزی که برد مهم است را میتونید تو انجام میتی مثل که من هدفم و رویاه هایم دست برداشتم و خواستم کاری کنم برای دخترای افغانستان من از برقه بال ساختم و خواستم برای جهانیان نشان بتم که دخترای افغانستان او قدر قدرت دارن که میتونن از پیله پروانه بسازن. Talash who stayed for a year in Pakistan hoping to return to her home country before moving to Spain after the Taliban took Kabul 3 years ago said that Afghan women were in a cage and it was her duty to resist. The Taliban's restrictions on women and freedom of expression have drawn sharp criticism from rights group and many foreign governments. Western countries have said the path to formal recognition of the Taliban is largely stalled until they reverse course of women's rights and open high schools to girls. Hama ki zindagi mutafawit dara, mushkilat mutafawit dara. Hij vaqt na khasem payam bara kase bara sanam. Chun ma me fahmam ke hama ki ma kahraman zindagi khud ma hasem. Fakat me khayam bara dokhtaray Afghanistan ira bogoyam ke. مزرد می خواهیم بله من اگر and Sri Lanka's prominent Tamil party, the Tamil National Alliance, has said it will back Sajid Premadasa, the main opposition challenger in the September 21 presidential election. Reports suggest the decision was made on Sunday at the Central Committee meeting. The votes of 2.2 million registered voters from the Tamil regions would be crucial for any front-runner to gain the 50% plus one vote required to be declared the winner. The incumbent president, Ranil Vikrame Singhe, opposition challenger, Sajid Premadasa, and the Marxist JVP leader, Anura Kumara Desanayake are the front-runners. The presidential poll is key to charting Sri Lanka's way out of its worst financial crisis, unleashed after it exhausted its foreign reserves, sending the economy into free fall and defaulting on foreign debt in 2022. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.